So let's begin a discussion about multiple linear regression. So first what we're going to do is just talk about the idea of multiple linear regression in general. So learning about the components of it, how the model works and so on. Um, we're not really going to focus too much on having a, a goal at the beginning. We're just going to say, here's the model, here's the components, here's how we work with it and, and so on. Then, um, once we get through that, we're going to talk a lot about using it to try and estimate an effect size. It's so estimating the effect of some variable x1 on some outcome. And then, after we've done that, we're going to talk a little bit about using multiple linear regression models to try and build prediction models, to try and predict some outcome. And so along the way, we'll talk about what's the focus of model building and variable selection when the model's trying to estimate the effect, versus what's the process of model building and variable selection when we're trying to predict some outcome. Okay. Multiple linear regression has all these same assumptions as simple linear regression. So the relationship between the numeric x's and the y is linear, that we have constant or equal variance, um, normally distributed um, around the line, um, and independent observations. Um, the way we check those assumptions is the same. If, say, nonlinearity is not met, the solutions we have to address that are all the same. Right? So we can try transforming variables, including polynomials, categorizing. Um, so really, it's an extension of simple linear regression, but at its core, it's not very different. So to introduce it at first, what I want to do is just add a second x variable. So first we're going to talk about when x1 is numeric and x2 is numeric. So having two variables, both two x variables, both numeric. And then when x1 is numeric, x2 is categorical. So having two x variables, one numeric, one categorical. What does the model look like? And uh, <clears throat> we've already learned a little bit about the idea of an indicator or dummy variable. Um, we'll recap some of that, but in the previous course you learned about the idea of how do categorical variables get included in regression models. And we'll repeat some of that here so that it's not um, completely new or completely assumed knowledge. So the first idea, when you have two x variables and both are numeric, and I should mention, we'll also look at doing this um, in R as well. So what I'm doing here, we'll look at on a set of data and visualizing it. So there, we're going to look at FEV, right, the lung capacity or forced exploratory volume, the data set we're going to be working with mostly um, through this um, set of ideas. X1 being the age, and X2 being the height of the children. Okay, so previously, we were thinking of simple integration where we'd have age, X1, here's FEV, or the Y variable, We'd have some scatter plot in there. Now we're adding another dimension. Okay, so here's the height. Okay, x2. And what we're going to end up with when we have two numeric variables, two numeric x variables, is this three-dimensional scatter plot. Okay, so it's a bit hard to visualize when it's drawn on a two-dimensional surface, but you can think of it, um, well, one way that might be easier to visualize it, and in the video working with R, you're going to get a bit better visualization there. But here's H, here's FEV, and now there's a third axis height coming out, and the scatter plot is in three dimensions, right? Or it's in this three dimensional cube, a um, set of points floating around there. And what we try and do is fit a plane, right, or a piece of paper through these. We still have the idea of residuals, looking at f how far the observations are from the regression line, or in this case, the regression plane. And our model is going to end up with the mean of y given x is b0 plus b1 x1 plus b2 x2. So we're going to get a slope coefficient for the x1 axis for age, and for the x2 axis for height. Right? So what's the slope on this axis? What's the slope on this other axis? And as I said, in the um, R video, we'll look at using, using this exact same example um, and try to visualize it with real data there. Now, what I want to talk a little bit about is what does the model look like when we have 
one numeric and one categorical variable. And so here, using the same data, looking at FEV as the outcome, and X1 being the age, and X2 being if the um, child smokes, no or yes. Zero or one, or no or yes. Now, again, in the separate video working with R, we'll look at how to visualize this sort of data. I'm going to talk about it here for now. There's two ways we can think of fitting a model to this. And, and I'll expand on the difference between these two as we progress through the next few weeks. <coughs> so here's the age, or x1. Here's the FEV, or the y variable. And we can think of, we have data for the non-smokers and data for the smokers. And we can think of fitting two separate lines, one for the non-smokers and one for the smokers. So having a categorical variable, we can think of it essentially as adding um, more lines to the plot. Right. In this case, we're looking at age and FEV, and smoke, yes or no. We have a line for smokers and a line for non-smokers. Now, one important difference, one important thing to talk about, is here, I've made the two lines parallel. We can also have, here's the non-smokers, and here's the smokers. And we can fit the models having non-parallel lines. We'll talk about the difference between forcing the lines to be parallel versus allowing them to have different slopes as we progress through the course. What I want to say for now, without getting um, too far down the rabbit hole, is this parallel lines, maybe I should write that, parallel lines, is no interaction okay, or what we're going to call no effect modification. And in another, um, well, as we progress through some of these ideas, we're going to talk about what exactly does it mean for it to be interaction or effect modification. I'll expand on it a bit more when we hit that point, but I guess for now I want to say these two terms sometimes get used interchangeably. They're not completely interchangeable. The, the term effect modification applies more to building an effect size model, interaction when it's a predictive model, but um, what's the word I'm looking for? I guess in terms of a model, parallel lines is no interaction or no effect modification. Non-parallel lines is interaction or effect modification. Okay, so they're operationalized in the same way. So this here is an example of interaction or effect modification. And again, we'll expand on that um, as we progress through the course, but the, the kind of quick version is no interaction or no effect modification is saying the effect that age has on FEV does not depend on smoking. Right? The rate, the slope, or the rate at which FEV increases with age is the same for smokers and non-smokers. Or we can say the effect that smoking has on FEV is the same at any age. Right? The distance between the smokers and the non-smokers is the same at any age. These two effects do not interact, or one effect does not depend on the other. Effect modification or interaction, right. we can see the slopes are different. The rate at which FEV increases with age is different for smokers and non-smokers. The effect of age depends on smoking. Right. Or if we look at the difference, the effect of smoking, the difference between a smoker and a non-smoker, it's different depending on the age. The effect of smoking depends on the age or the effect of smoking is modified by age. So what, we're going to expand a bit more on this idea of interaction or effect modification. But I wanted to um, mention it now because as we're talking about 
including another category, or including a categorical variable in a regression model. One choice we're going to have to make is if we want to force the lines to be parallel or allow them to be different. And that idea is if we think there was no interaction or if there is. Later on, we'll expand on this idea and we'll also decide conceptually as well as statistically how to decide which one we think is a better representation of the reality. So now what I'm going to do is get into, again, looking at numeric values for no interaction versus interaction model and, and working with some of that. And in a separate video, we'll look at fitting these two different models in R. Stick around, guys. There's more to see, and please stay safe.